Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Government continues to push the juvenile justice reform agenda with a development training program. St. Lucia continues to be of interest to the international investor community. The National Conservation Authority takes another tangible step in its environmental awareness campaign. All that plus the latest in youth development sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arcueil. Following the passage of the Child Justice and Child Care Protection and Adoption Bills in the Parliament of St. Lucia, government is continuing to push the juvenile justice reform agenda. St. Lucia is party to the Juvenile Justice Reform Project, the JJRP Phase 2, a collaborative effort between the OECS and the United States Agenda for International Development. The main goal is to help youth in conflict with the law rehabilitate. On Thursday, the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment launched a Child Adolescent Development Training Program for Child Protection and Child Justice Practitioners. More from Anisia Antoine. In St. Lucia, the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment has partnered with UNICEF to conduct a two-day training exercise which seeks to understand positive youth development and how the adolescent brain works. Gloria Augustus is the Juvenile Justice Reform Project Specialist with the OACS Commission. I was reading something where a law is being changed in the U.S. I was reading about a federal bill authorizing and strengthening the Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Act to set new standards to treat youth in a way appropriate to their age, among other areas. And one of the new standards mentioned to treat youth in an age-appropriate way is that each state must submit a three-year plan to be eligible for federal funding under the law, and these plans must now demonstrate that they are guided by scientific knowledge about adolescent brain development and behavior. According to the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, the recent launch of the Adolescent Wellbeing and Equity Report will provide policymakers with a true snapshot into the real world of adolescents and provide an avenue to assist them during the transition period. Following up on the social reform agenda and reflecting on the commitment of the government of St. Lucia and by extension the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, we have embarked on a number of initiatives that address the needs of our children and adolescents in St. Lucia with financial and technical support under the OACS Juvenile Justice Reform Project Phase 2. Hence it is critical that over the next two days of training that you, the participants, get well acquainted with positive youth development and how the adolescent brain works. St. Lucia recently enacted the Child Justice and Child Care Protection and Adoption Bills, which speak loudly to the use of therapeutic interventions for youth to help overcome the many challenges which they may encounter throughout life. The research has shown that the period between 11 to 19, which is referred to as the second decade, is probably the most vulnerable time in the life cycle of an individual and must be managed carefully by first understanding that many of the behavioral patterns exhibited by our youth are actually de developmental. That is, it's part of the natural growing process. Phase two of the Juvenile Justice Reform Project is expected to be complete by September 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Science in Schools is continuing to receive a boost from activities being held to promote its importance among students on the island. Quick Satney reports on the upcoming National Science Fair and recently concluded National Science Quiz. It was an all-girls finish for the 2019 edition of the National Science Quiz. The St. Joseph's Convent and the Ave Maria Girls Primary walked away with the top prizes for their respective competitions. The quiz, like its counterpart, the National Science Fair, is used as a tool to inspire greater interest from students in science subjects. Curriculum Officer for National Sciences and Technology, Jeanette George, expressed her department's satisfaction with this year's contests, congratulating the winning teams. 
Another exciting year in the world of science, technology, engineering and mathematics STEM in St. Lucia. There is no doubt that science is alive in St. Lucia and it's alive and well among our students. In the primary school division, Ave Maria Girls, who walked away with the top prize, was followed by Tiroche Combined Miku in second and Pi Combined in third. In the secondary school's category, St. Joseph's Convent beat out St. Mary's College for the top prize, whilst Beanfield Comprehensive came in third. The experience was really good. I mean, the practices were constant. Every time at lunchtime, we were practicing. And the feeling of achieving this is amazing because we knew what we could do and we actually did it. I did not want to do this competition at first, like at all, at all. And eventually I was kind of dragged into it, but it's one thing that I was really glad to be dragged into. Being able to go the extra mile and do research um, other than what we have done at school. It wasn't so much about the competition the preparation was for me. It was more about learning more about science. It feels like I've just won a marathon, a long race, a, lo a very long race. I feel like I've just won something amazing because it makes us feel smart and good about ourselves. The National Science Quiz always precedes the National Science Fair, which has been scheduled for March 27th to the 29th at the Derek Walcott Square in Castries. Ms. George has called on members of the public to support the activity. Let them see that we are interested in them, especially when they are taking part in such a positive activity. And it will be at the Derek Walcott Square. It's going to be free. There is no fee to pay. Come in, come in, support the students. The science activities are being conducted to the theme Building Resilience for a Sustainable Future through Science and Technology. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Chris Satney reporting. St. Lucia continues to be of interest to the international investor community. His Excellency Anton Edmund, St. Lucia's Ambassador to the United States of America, was one of five presenters at a February 28, 2019 symposium organized by the Minority Business Development Agency Business Center in collaboration with Export Import Bank of the United States. The symposium, which was held under the theme Export Essentials, provided participants with pertinent information on the avenues available to assist small businesses in exporting their products and services to international markets. Ambassador Edmund's presentation focused on St. Lucia as a prime destination, a hub for doing business in the Caribbean. In addition to providing an economic profile of St. Lucia, the presentation focused on some of the specific opportunities that exist for potential investors in the country and highlighted the role of Invest St. Lucia as the primary agency that investors should liaise with vis-à-vis -vis their interests. As the island celebrates 40 years as an independent nation, citizens are being encouraged to embrace more fully the concept of charity and volunteerism against that backdrop a national movement for participation in Good Deeds Day has been launched. Volunteer St. Lucia, in collaboration with the National Youth Council, officially launched Good Deeds Day on Wednesday. The day is an annual tradition where individuals and organizations the world over choose to volunteer and help others. Volunteer St. Lucia promises an array of activities as part of the celebration of Good Deeds Day. The National Coordinator for Volunteers in Lucia, Diane Felicier, called on the public to come out in full support and to play its part. This year, Volunteers in Lucia is happy to bring the campaign to the entire island through a calendar of activities scheduled for participation by all chapters, including Zumba, etc. from UK. This local campaign is taking place in collaboration with Giving Tuesday, Eastern Caribbean, a charitable initiative by Writing Legends, and forms part of a wider regional Good Deeds Day Caribbean campaign together with Trinidad and Tobago, Suriname, Curacao, Dominica, Haiti, Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Guyana, and Jamaica. We invite everyone 
to join us in this global day of doing good. Commanding Officer of the Salvation Army, Major Derek Mitchell, indicated that it should be put into practice the idea that everyone can do something good, no matter how big or small, to improve the lives of their peers and positively influence their environment. Major Mitchell also highlighted the strong youth involvement in helping the less fortunate. What I like about St. Lucia is that there is a social consciousness that's alive and well here. And it is especially coming out amongst the young people. We, I won't use the word inundated because that sounds too, too heavy, but we get quite a lot of people calling in from schools, from organizations, predominantly young people who want to come out to the Salvation Army. They ask about the programs that we operate and they want to come out and they want to assist us in operating these programs. Leader of Logistics for Good Deeds Day, McAllister Hunt, highlighted some of the events to be held as part of activities for Good Deeds Day. I can definitely say, as the Major of the Salvation Army did mention, there's a very alive and thriving social consciousness amongst the youth in St. Lucia when it comes to giving back and contributing and working towards the development of our communities. And that being said, I can definitely tell you that the Good Deeds Day activities coming up within the month of April will definitely be all out, all in, given the number of persons who will be involved. You can look forward to activities like the Day of the Pampering for Elderly, which means take your grandmother, take your grandfather, bring them out, get a fresh haircut, maybe a little makeover. Right? We have a nationwide food drive on the 5th of April, and our culminating activity will be on April 7th at the Philip Master Grounds in Viewfort. We're going to have a big showcase. All the volunteers are going to come out and show the public that we have a lot more to offer than just our time. Good Deeds Day will take place on the 7th of April 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And this is the NTN Nightly. Coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. Imagine being away from home, surrounded by danger and hostility, unable to escape or speak the language, and being exploited. It might sound like fiction, but for 40 million victims of human trafficking worldwide, it is a reality. Innocent people enticed by the promise of a new life, then enslaved into forced labor or sex trafficking. Human trafficking happens in plain sight. Know the signs. See it. Report it. To report suspected cases of human trafficking, call the TIP hotline at 847. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello once again. I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. One more match was completed as the 2019 Mass United Insurance 50 over under 19 schools cricket tournament continued on Wednesday, March 6. At the Wen Plain Field in Monipo, Antipo Secondary continued their unbeaten run in the tournament, defeating Granivere Secondary by five wickets. Granivere batting first in a match reduced to 45 overs a side was dismissed for 111 in 35 overs, with Jaquan Deschamps making 22 and Janil Emmanuel 14. Bowling for Antipo Secondary, female player Zayda James 3 for 28, Jemrick Alexander with identical figures of 3 for 28 and Royce Paul 2 for 13. Antipo in reply finished on 115 for 5 in 20.3 overs with captain Denzel Roberts leading the way with an unbeaten knock of 27. Olari Alfred 18, Samuel Kade 16 made useful contributions. The chief wicket taker for Granivier Secondary was Jaquan Deschamps with 3 for 40. News now from the Interschools Volleyball Tournament. In the female category, Sufre Comprehensive Secondary won over Corinth Secondary, two games to love, 25-8, 25-9. And in men's competition, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College won over Sufre Comprehensive, 25-17, 25-20. And Leon Hess Comprehensive, were winners over John Orla Memorial 25-16, 25-19. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports two-day capacity building and institutional strengthening workshop ended at the Blue Coral Mall Conference Room Thursday. 
Participants were exposed to insights on a number of subjects pertaining to youth development. Director of Sports Patrick Matre, a former president of the National Youth Council, gave some background on the evolution of the organization and its significance in bringing youth issues to national attention. We are a youth foundation. And those of you who do demographics, as you move on to demographics, you will see more and more that as you, this, the concept of population transition, you have a lot of um, older persons, and then you have younger persons, and then the, 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 the band of younger persons stretches out. Um, when we were formed in 85 in NYC, as you see, we still say that 35% of the population of St. Lucia is below the age of 35 years. It is basically still about that. We have almost 40% of our population below the age of 35 years. That is significant. It is significant because when you look at those demographics, it means that you have a lot more work to do, but also it means that you have a very large dependent population. And so it has implications for you as you focus, and that's why I encourage you to know the statistics, know your island, know your country, know your history. With that song bite from Patrick Matre, we conclude our update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports today. I'm Ryan O'Brien, reminding you, April is Youth Month. Thanks, Ryan. The initiative spearheaded by the National Conservation Authority to increase environmental awareness amongst the youth took another tangible step on Thursday. The details in this report. The National Conservation Authority, in partnership with the St. Lucia National Trust and the Department of Fisheries, has invited conservation clubs from schools around the island to participate in a series of science experiments and activities related to beach ecosystems. The Beach Activity is part of the Protecting Paradise, a Beach Education and Action campaign, which aims to educate students on beach pollution and prevention and how it affects their daily lives. Coretta Crooks Charles is the Communications and Advocacy Officer for the St. Lucia National Trust. And there's an NCA worker that the students will be interacting with. They'll be going to each of the stations to get more information, whether it is about pollution of our marine ecosystem water quality testing. The Trust specifically is speaking about how important our marine resources are to our heritage and how we can use these resources to improve various aspects of our lives, whether it's through job creation, um, recreation, or health. And we're happy to be a part of this project because sometimes we see the ocean and how you know expansive, how big it is, and we don't really understand what it does for us and the different aspects of our lives. Sarah Cheng is a Peace Corps attached to the NCA, responsible for creating the conservation clubs. The NCA has been working with conservation clubs for the past year, um, and this is kind of a culmination project. Um, we wanted to get the kids out into the environment rather than learning in the classroom. It's always better to learn out in the field. Um, and beach and coastal ecosystems are such a huge, important part of the St. Lucian environment, so we wanted to really focus on beach conservation. Yvonne Edwin, fisheries assistant responsible for information and communication, educated the conservation club members on different aspects of beach profiling. At the department, we monitor and ensure that the various ecosystems within the marine environment is adequately monitored and beach profiling is one of those activities that we do as part of our work program. So my responsibility here is to go through the beach profile training aspect, why we do beach profile training. It really is to understand the seasonal changes, the shape of the beach, effective management of the coast. And so we give them an insight as to what we do, why we do it, and beach profiling is one of the areas that we are focusing on this morning. For the second phase of the campaign, the conservation clubs will be provided with beach bins on which the club members will paint environmental messages and images. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. There are four basic rules to developing and maintaining good oral health. Brushing after meals and before going to bed, flossing at least once for the day, eating the right foods and visiting the dentist regularly. Remember, you want to keep those smiles for later years. A message from the Dental Department of the Ministry of Health and this station. 
Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayon. Merci au tel, Michel. Monsieur le Président du département, qui est responsable pour l'information, le gouvernement de la CETLC, le CGIS, à ce moment-là, la télévision nationale pour la NTN, qui a présenté la nouvelle Aquayon, présenté par Primus Hutchinson. Plusieurs agences, à ce moment-là, il y a des écoles qui sont engagées dans l'affaire de l'événement. Il y a semblé que la mère la vie de jeudi bon matin pour apprendre plus d'importance du programme de protection pour l'environnement. L'activité a été organisée par l'autorité de conservation nationale et National Trust. C'était étudiant de l'école Salah, participer et apprendre ces divers sanuka servi à Kai, particulièrement en cuisine, et de manière à affecter et présenter la rivière et la mer pays. Directeur du programme pour l'agence de l'environnement des étudiants Kaoibla, Nadia Kazabon, c'est un assez facilitateur exercice ça là. Amoutre yo l'année bagayan gloire yo ça ouais qu'on zodi mais l'année bagayan gloire yo pas ça ouais qu'on type bête bactérie nous nous pas ça ouais qui a affecté nous qui a affecté quand nous qui a fait nous malades. So amoutre yo à un test na na fait pour yo ouais bactérie qui a qui a grow à un type là. Um, lots of organizations organization ki um, ici a bo um, ko national trust ka pale di yo um, tout sa moun ka fè bon la mer ki ka affecté gloa ka affecté la mer um, ka détruit um, se coral a détruit um, poisson um, fisheries ka fè pi yo an activité pou yo um, mizi we um, longe um, um, sabla pou yo we um, Adati, adan l'année, ça va aller être à notre c'est moi ça va être vie. Mais si nous on continue à tirer en ça va, il va pas jamais vie encore puisque nous tirer trop. Chef pour autorité conservation nationale, Madame Jacinthe Agnès Lee, t'es tout plein et puis exercice là, et déclare que j'ai jamais dit pour l'Amérique aider yo et puis volontaire puisque pour ça instruit c'est étudier nous pour yo même instruit par un yo pour pas jeter les ordi yo bord de la mer. C'est le si Jacques travaille sérieusement pour implémenter la meilleure façon pour adresser la situation des problèmes d'immigration qui ne pas régler. Ça veut dire que les gens qui ont quitté le pays et qui ont dans l'autre pays souhaitent pour chaper le pays pour l'abaissement politique, l'esclavage, la situation économique et bien en bas la menace des offenses crimes. Des moyens sessions face au public à la télévision NTN. Représentatif des systèmes de sécurité régional, ça c'est RSS, avec les officiers du ministère de justice, en ce moment, l'autre représentatif, de tient une consultation concernant le développement de Officier qui est responsable pour l'information au ministère de Claudio Monlui, déclare qu'il y a des situations qui sont très sensibles dans l'affaire Salah, c'est les gens qui ont cherché secours dans un autre pays qui est meilleure manière pour payer à adresser, effectivement. Selon moi, lui, c'est le cas de suivre l'agrément de la Nation Unie qui est un guide pour tout pays qui m'a amené. Si nous voulons vivre, si nous parlons pour faire la vie au plus mal, parce qu'il était déjà hier avant de vivre cette liste, mais l'autre manière, nous passons pour tout le monde qui vient, tout le monde. Peyani sa nou ka kwiye immigration, peyani sa nou ka kwiye border control, a development. Alor la ni a chay bagay ki nef ka fet a za fe migration. Evek, it's se a botita pou nou diski se sa, mene a klete a li de pili bitla a so sa ka fet. A ce ça, nous savons tout le pays, l'Amérique, tous les jours, nous regardons la télévision CNN, nous regardons um, différentes um, manières, nous regardons les gens qui sont sortis du pays, pour vous, yo, côté où ils sont sortis, eh, eh, qui ne sont pas à pied, qui ne sont pas à ce condition. Um, yo ka accepté yo pour vivre dans cette pays. Alors ça, c'est un euh, euh, nous, ça dit, un sujet qui choque. C'est joie. Mon lui, oui, remarque que le système de sécurité, c'est pays où je 
pas pa, pa, pa vle Rita pour suivre ces règles-là qui a guidé la direction de la Alors, nous sommes bien contents pour nous ça ni quand il dit ce question de la salle, Pour les gens qui ont trouvé l'occasion pour faire une consultation de la face au public, la télévision indienne a été représentée. Alors, faites-en pour eux à ce programme indien. Les organisations volontaires PIA qui ont créé à ce peuple et aussi business commune pour entretenir l'esprit volontaire au Léon pays cette ci Durant une spéciale session à bureau GIS, les représentants du bureau du Premier ministre, là, ensemble et puis diverses organisations volontaires et Conseil national de jeunesse, tenu en consultation pour expliquer pour le public la significance de l'initiative. Le consultant à bureau du Premier ministre, là, Diane Félicien, explique que Là, il a parlé de volontaires, ça ne veut pas dire que c'est faux ou faire une grande quantité de bagages pour aider une autre. Ici, je veux dire qu'il y a un porte-flèche, un bon d'eau, un plat mangé, passer des petits bonjour, des petits paroles et puis des gens qui ennuient, qui fait un pile pour lever l'esprit de l'autre monde. Il a ajouté que l'esprit coup de main, c'est un qui a toujours existé à cette place. Ça n'a pas un lien neuf pour nous. Mais ça nous voulait essayer de faire, c'est tout le monde, l'école, le um, bureau du gouvernement, um, l'autre organisation um, organize, <laughs> pour venir et uh, supporter nous quand nous essayons de faire bien en cette ici. Ok, dis-nous, um, en cette ici, quel est le programme ça, là, qui a marché um, après ça? Est-ce que vous êtes satisfait à ce moment-là, le public a coopéré et puis autres? Um, le public a venu, il um, a agi uh, bien avec nous, il a supporté nous, mais nous avons nou besoin de plus de monde pour venir, pour pou, um, aider les gens dans cette liste. Il um, n'a pas supposé l'ajout pour que um, un pécho vienne supporter et ben, aider les gens. Wendy Jonai, c'est un ancien représentant volontaire pour souffrir. Nous avons aidé à nettoyer Bolomea. Nous aussi, um, en April, nous avons aidé à tuer Soufouye pour faire manger par ces gens qui passent à really, um, aider les gens pauvres. Pauv. Nous aussi, ensemble avec Volonté Chapter 7, ici, nous avons pris um, un jour pour aller au Liban communauté pour visiter les gens qui sont pauvres. Um, nous, peut-être, nous aider à nettoyer les gens, à peindre, à juste faire um, confortable. Cette ci ensemble avec les autres pays de la Terre, qui ont observé la Journée internationale des femmes, ça c'est vendredi le 8 mars, en bas de thème, qui est illégal, bâti à façon qui savent et un changement nouveau. Célébration dans l'année Sala qui a embrassé le thème pour le 40e anniversaire de l'indépendance de cette ci qui a dit nous tous à c'est à la route nous pour ce qui venir. À part de ça, le thème pour l'observation de la Journée internationale des femmes qui a travaillé la main à la main et puis le thème de l'indépendance en suggestion pour faire réfléchir à ce et pour réfléchir à ce et pour nous pour nous coopérer et travailler ensemble dans le pays. C'est aussi qu'on aussi travaille et puis les autres pays la terre pour faire une révision nationale concernant l'implémentation ou apport des déclarations des pays Beijing, des actions pour trouver considération à dans 65 sessions pour adresser la situation de femmes internationales. Il y a un temps d'observation de journée internationale des femmes, puis c'est aussi qu'on engagé en façon pour réfléchir à ce progrès qui j'ai fait et aussi trois cassements femmes j'ai expérimenté un effort pour établir un commitment pour l'agrément ça là. Pour la célébration de Journée internationale des femmes, la division qui est-ce que ça pour faire des femmes en PIA, qui a été un service de la messe vendredi le 8 mars à 10h bon matin en grand cathédrale catholique à Vilcastri. Et c'est comme ça nous avons une nouvelle nous pour aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie un temps pour garder, je vous remercie une invitation pour jouer et moi encore. Je vous remercie pour une nouvelle. À présent, nous avons pour Nisha. Merci en pile, Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise.
An Atlantic high-pressure system will maintain a moderate to brisk easterly wind flow across the eastern Caribbean region during the next few days. Weak, unstable conditions in the lower atmosphere over the Lesser Antilles will bring a few scattered showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 4.29 p.m. and will be low at 10.31 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was high at 5.36 p.m. and will be low again at 11.58 p.m. The seas, moderate to locally rough, with waves and northerly swells 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 6.16 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.